Okay, so I'll jump right in. Um, it's an important week. You are choosing your career, your track this week. Um, it is. It has been eight weeks, well, seven and a half weeks today of hard work. And so you've made it thus far. That is great. Um, so Mariam and I are just going to be discussing. Okay, I think Mariam is joining. So um, Mariam and I are just discussing the careers manual. This is not really, um, this, this is a tutorial about the exercise that you have to do, but this information comes directly from the careers manual. And I think you have all received the careers manual. If you have, can you type yes in the chat so that I can tell if everyone has received the careers manual. Um, so, you the, this information is directly from there so it shouldn't be new information to you um and then mariam will just okay great it seems like a lot of people have access to it so mariam's presentation will just be um discussing how to do the actual exercise how to answer the questions um so i'll start presenting um um so i'll start presenting mariam please let me know if you can see my screen <clears throat> Yeah, I can. Okay, so thank you. All this information is directly from the careers manual. We just did this quickly, this presentation, so that it's easier for you to um, go through in this time period. Um, you don't have a lot of time. The interim submission is due today, I believe. So yeah, this exercise is about choosing your career. And I will be talking or going through the skill section. Um, so a lot of what we are doing going forward is preparing you to apply to jobs. So um, once you have chosen your track, um, now you can apply for jobs in that specific track, right? So when it comes to the skills that you will be um, listing in your CV, our main goal is for you to put your best foot forward to make a great first impression because it just makes the hiring process easier and it helps your confidence as well. So um, I will, um, these are the skills for machine learning engineering. Um, I know quite a few people are interested in that. Web3 engineering skills required data engineering skills required. So I had a discussion with the trainees assigned to me yesterday. I'm not very tech savvy. So I think that they help me more than I help them. But I did stress the fact that it is going to be very difficult for you to apply for jobs and successfully get jobs if you do not have the um, the background required. So if you have um, data engineering, oh, there's so many spelling errors, my apologies. If you have data engineering experience, but you do not have ML engineering experience, then it's going to be difficult for you to, you know, get a job. Um, it will, I, I doubt that recruiters will even give your CV a second look. Um, so just going back to the first slide, um, using the correct word, keywords allows recruiters to scheme your CV effort effortlessly. So once you've decided on your track, your career, whatever, you have to pretty much tailor your CV because there are generally two levels of job applications. So you'd apply for the job whichever it is, wherever, and you would, 
the first line of recruiters, which are HR people, and they usually don't have that much technical experience. They'll skim your CV pretty quickly and see if you fit or match the basic uh, requirements for the job. It also depends on how big the company is. If you are applying at a smaller company, you will most likely get more detailed, your CV will get a more detailed look. A larger company, the first line of recruiters will just look at it briefly and then if you um, fit the, the requirements, you'll get moved on to the more technical um, recruiters who are actually working on the same kind of projects that you'd like to be hired for. Okay. Once again, my apologies for the spelling errors. So when it comes to the education part, a lot of you guys have advanced degrees. You are all highly educated people. You not only have degrees, you also have um, done courses, you have done volunteer work, internships. Um, so all of you are qualified in some way or the other, you have work experience, you have skills, but as I said, the first line of recruiters are going to have a very quick look at your CV. And in previous weeks, we had a CV exercise where your CV had to be not more than two pages. So this is where we stress only relevant education background should be listed. Um, so, Definitely add that you have done a university degree, but if your, your degree has nothing to do with what you're applying for, just keep the bare minimum, just so that they can see that you have, um, you know, completed that. Then, of course, your 10 Academy training will also be included here. Um, oh, my goodness. What has happened? Okay. I'm sorry, but I've had a glitch where we had no power for about three hours today. Okay, but basically what this says here is for work experience, only the relevant um, work experience applies. You should have at least three months of real work experience on your CV. Um, three months is like the minimum. However, if you don't have that, we will be helping you to improvise and provide that on your CV. We will be working that out with you in the supported job search phase. Um, so volunteering, internships, work experience, and then also providing if you have completed any projects, um, which I believe some of you have done with Teen Academy um, on GitHub, I'm assuming. So then providing the titles of this, the names of the projects, short descriptions, and um, links to the project. So that those will then go to the second line of technical recruiters. Um, so I'm stopping. I'm not presenting anymore. But the main thing is all of this is available in the careers manual, which you have received. So going through the skill section and figuring out what your skills are suited, what, what experience you have, what skills do you have, um, all of that so that you can make the correct decision. Um, we want you to choose one track. I know a lot of people have mentioned choosing multiple, so two or all three tracks. However, we you are welcome to do that, but we won't really support that because it means that you will be working three times harder to apply to jobs, to spread your skills out all over the place. You will be stretched thin. Um, so we, we, we will be supporting you to choose one track, one career going forward, but there will always be space for you to, um, to broaden your skills and then maybe, um, you know, complete, uh, get experience or qualifications in whatever else it is that you want to do. So um, go through the careers, 
manual the skill section and you need to take a very careful look at your skills your experience and make a uh and make a uh a decision that will serve you the best mariam are you taking over for your section do you need me to present or are you good yeah please help me fire up my slide because i'm using my phone thank you I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Please help present my slides and I'll just carry on. Yes. Um, so should I um, present it? Um, okay, it's up now. Oh, okay. So can you see it? Yeah. So, um, hi guys, I just noticed that I didn't greet or anything. I kind of joined in late because I was having some technical issues, but that's that. So, basically, we're doing like a run through of this um, exercise, which is you deciding your track, choosing your very first job, and everything that comes along with it. Next slide, please. So for this exercise, you are supposed to, one, um, decide what track you want to pursue. And while you're deciding that track, you also need to try and do some evaluation of the skills you have. And you have to also include a 50-word summary. So this is usually, um, this is basically an introduction to who you are. You know how if you have like guest speakers, you go to conferences or someone visits your school to come and like give a speech or something. There is this summary that is used to describe them. So they probably need to say, oh, this is a scientist that's good in maybe biomedical engineering. The person has done this, that, that. The person is also equipped in this, that, that. So that's pretty much what the 50-word summary. Your 50-word summary is supposed to be an introduction of who you are. So if someone looks at your CV without going through every other part, or perhaps they'll go through it later, the 50-word summary is supposed to just capture who you are and by 50 word it means the max is 50 word it doesn't have to be exactly 50 words so it can be from 20 upward as long as it has really captured everything you're capable of so it's supposed to comprise of who you are what you can do the concepts or the tools you're familiar with and you can also include like projects you've carried out so here's a typical example this is someone's 50 word summary it states a data engineer who takes pride in building and monitoring data processing system is proficient in Python, SQL, and Bash. He is experienced in working with different databases. He, is also, he has also worked with frameworks such as Kafka and Spark for building data pipeline, pipelines. Rather. So this person's data, um, this person's word summary is just for five words. So while you are, while you have decided what track you want to follow. If you probably need to be a data engineer like this person, you should be able to say who you are and what the things you can do, the concept and tools you're familiar with. And if you want to include some of the projects you've carried out. So if someone can read your 50 words somewhere at a go, the person just has like this big overview of who you are and the things you can do generally without probably looking at your other skills, um, your work experience or your education in general. I also like to say that um, you don't have to come up with like, it gets better with time. I don't know if that makes sense. Come up with something now. It doesn't have to be super, super concrete. Later on, you develop it. You know your CV, you keep updating your CV, you keep adding things to it. So your 50 word summary is not supposed to be perfect at the moment. Come up with something. I would suggest 20 words and above. Then later you can keep um, adding more, more, more words to it based on the things you're capable of. Um, I have also included an appendix where you have like other examples of uh, 50 word summary because everybody has their style. Some people might not exactly start with a data engineer. Some people can start by saying their name. Some people can say, um, let's say Miron, because there's some Miron message. Someone can say, Miron is a, so depending on the style you want to follow, depending on the style you want to follow, you will develop your 50 word summary. 
Another place where you can get like samples is also on LinkedIn. So if you go to LinkedIn, under professional summary or is it bio, the first part of the, um, uh, after the picture and whatever they are doing, the first part of the LinkedIn page has like this brief introduction about people. So you can also go through people's LinkedIn profile to see the kind of style you want to use and just develop your own 50 word summary. And as Meron has asked, yes, you are to do that in this exercise, but in the final one, which I will get to in a bit. So that's that about the 50 word summary. Um, next slide, please. So for this exercise, we have an interim exercise, which is due today. And then we have a final submission, which is due on Saturday. So for the interim, which is just like intermediate stuff, you're supposed to give us a brief write-up on the track you want to pursue after your training. That is, the track you want to pursue pretty much and why you believe you have expertise for this track. Why have you decided against the other two tracks? So if you pick Web3, tell us why you have why you, why you want to pick um, Web3 and why you believe you'll be good for Web3. You also want to tell us why you think you're not so good for um, data engineering and machine learning engineering. In your write-up, please ensure you have explained that you have the relevant skills that you need for each track. If you go through the career uh, manual, and I'll keep emphasizing that, the career manual is like your Bible or Quran, anything that, it's like your guide pretty much, it's your map. Yeah, that's the better word. The career manual is your map, so it will help you navigate through those tracks properly. And then there is a skill section there, I think under 3.5, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Under 3.5, you would see um, a skill section, which is something Carrie has touched on. on um, in the table there, each track has been, for each track, the skills you are required for each track has been grouped. If you understand what I mean. So go through each um, skills under each track or the track you want to pursue and then say if you have, um, what's the word now? Explain to us why um, the skills you have and the skills you want to develop and stuff like that. So the interim submission is very simple. If you go to the um, exercise document, it's just basically you are um, saying the track you want to pursue, why you want to pursue it, and um, why you don't want to pursue the other two tracks, and explain the relevant skills you have chosen, that you have that for this chosen track, rather. Then for the final um, exercise, for the final submission, this is where there's lots of work. Um, in not more than two pages in total, you would explain your motivation for this track, the um, the overlap between your preparation and skills with what the employer, uh, employer as well. I'm pretty much reading out from the career exercise document now, so there is nothing new here. Also, you're also going to give us an elaborate from why you are not pursuing the other two tracks. Also, complete the table of expertise keyword, highlighting which expertise keyword you could already include on your table. So there is this table um, under key skills. You're going to just select um, the ones that are essential, the ones that you think the employers want and the ones that you think you want to acquire. So if you read through the exercise document, what you're supposed to do is already there. And to answer my own question, yes, you have to complete the skill summary um, and the 50 word summary. So it's not in the in, um, interim um, submission, but in the final submission, that is when you're supposed to have come up with your 50 word summary. And yeah, based on the week one exercise, which is the real world jobs, you're also going to state at least three jobs that you think you can apply for because you know your training is ending by July 31st. That's the, by the end of July. So you're going to just state three other jobs or three jobs related to your track that you think you're going to be ready to apply come August 1st. So that being said, the interim submission is very chill. Just state the track you want, why you're not pursuing other track and why you think you have, what skills do you have that you think you're ready to pursue that track. Then the final submission, which is due on Saturday, is the more elaborate one where you have to complete the skill. Um, the table of expertise keyword, you also have to complete your 50 word summary and um, also state like three jobs that you're ready to apply for. I think that's that. Um, yeah. So 
I think we can take questions now. So again, Marilyn, the one, um, the submission you're doing today, like the internet submission, you don't have to include your 50 watt summary. It's the one that is due on Saturday. That's the final submission that you're going to include the 50 watt summary. So take your time to um, think of the things you want to include in your summary. Go through the appendix in the manual. There are about 10 um, types or there are about 10 examples. So you can flesh out things you want and go to LinkedIn to you see these things. Um, are there any other questions about choosing your track, uh, your career itself, not just the exercise? Um, you can ask questions about the order. I'm not sure what you mean, Kevin. So, like, I just want to ask what we have to deliver for today's submission. Okay, today's submission yeah. is today's submission is pretty much you giving us a brief write-up which covers which track you will pursue for your first role after batch five and why you believe you have the expertise for this track. So the um submission, the internet submission, which is due today, is just you writing, giving us a brief write-up, just saying, Oh, I have decided to pursue. Web3, and this is why I think I am capable of this, or this is why I think I align with this track more, and I cannot go further with um, machine learning and data engineering because data engineering because I think I am not good in this, 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 or I struggle with this, this, this. Is that answering the question? Then further, you would explain the skills you have if you've decided to follow Web3. I'm just an example now. So because I have decided to go with Web3, this is why I think I, um, I am going for this track and I have the relevant skills for this. Or you can just say, these are the relevant skills needed for this track. But personally, I have this, 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 and I'm ready to build on this, this, this before the end of the training or why still going, why still being in the job search phase, which is three months afterwards, after July. So that's, the interim is very straightforward. What track? Why aren't you following the other tracks? Why do you think you're good for this track? And what are the skills that are necessary for this track? Do you have them? Yes, I do. Which other ones do you want to develop? Okay, I don't have them, but I'm ready to develop this. Very easy. It's the final one that is more broader. And every other, everything is in the careers um, document, is in the careers um, exercise document. That's why we should say that you should please take your time and go through all the instructions because everything you need is there. And then in the careers exercise, it has been differentiated. So there's interim and there's final. Kevin, have that answered your question? Yes, it does. All right. Um, so if there aren't any other questions in the next few minutes, I guess we can wrap up because you have to get the interim submission done for today. So I know you need all the time you can get. So I'll just wait two minutes for someone to volunteer a question or two, then we can wrap up. Mariam, are you comfortable closing the session now? Do you think we can go ahead with that? I think if there are no questions, we can go on. If, like you know, you've already been assigned to either me or Kari, so you should probably have other um, issues along the line you can easily reach out to. 
yeah. you assign um, tutor to discuss things. Yeah. Yeah, we're always on Slack. Okay, guys, go get this assignment done.